winter's well and truly upon us now and I'm sure a lot of you are out spending time at the driving range as golf course time becomes more limited. And in this, this video what I'd like to talk to you about is types of practice, how best to utilise your time out on the driving range. I spend a lot of time here watching players practice, walking up and down the range, obviously working with players, helping them improve. One of the things that I notice about practice is a general lack of structure when people come to the driving range. So I'm going to talk to you about two types of practice today, things that you can mix in to your practice to make you more efficient, to get the best out of your time and to improve your game in the best way. So we're going to start with what might be considered more traditional practice. This is called block practice. It tends to be you come along to the range or the practice ground, you have one, two clubs, and we hit a basket of balls, potentially working on a part of our golf swing if we're, if we're getting help or trying to improve, but generally just hitting balls down the range, trying to build repetition in the movement. Now, you'll see here that I've created for myself a little practice station. And this is something in this part of practice which is crucial, something I don't see enough players do. So what I've done is I've made an attempt at creating three lines around a target down at the range. Now, I've got two parallel lines representing my target line. Okay, So we're going to hit this end ball here initially. I've got a line between my feet and the ball, which I'm going to attempt to stand parallel to feet, knees, hips, shoulders, upper body, parallel to that inside line. I've got a line on the outside formed by this club here which is again parallel to that. And the reason that I do that is I tend to find that players respond better to seeing parallel lines rather than just one individual club laid down. We're essentially here creating, if you like, railway tracks for your ball to target line makes it a little bit easier to visualize your body position, your alignment. The third line is a set of balls here which are going to run at 90 degrees to the two target lines and that's going to help me with my ball position. So when I'm coming to practice I've selected a target down the range that I'm looking to try and control my flight towards. I want to, as I'm practicing my golf swing, guarantee that my setup is repetitive and the same every time. If my setup changes I'm going to produce different swings without realizing it. And often if you practice from a poor setup, you'll do more harm than good. So we start out building a, a dress position. I can control my ball position using this line here. I can see much easier where the ball is positioned in my feet. I can use the visual aids of the clubs on the ground, which make it a lot easier for me to check my alignment and produce an accurate repetitive setup. Now I can hit 50 golf balls in this position knowing that I'm setting up in the same place every time and knowing that that relates to a target that I've selected down the range. The more you practice in this environment the more likely it is that you'll create that address position, that mental picture when you're out on the golf course. So if you're going to practice and you're concerned only with your swing and grooving that in, then the first stage for your practice will be to build a practice station, learn to set up the same way every time in a controlled, repetitive environment, you'll start to build the foundations of a very solid, stable address position coming into the start of the season. So we've covered block practice, and you'll notice now that I move into phase two of my practice session that the lines have disappeared, I've taken those away. Because part two of your practice session should always revolve around some specific, on-course, targeted practice. What do I mean by that? Well, essentially, block practice is very good at creating repetitive movements, building a swing, in other words. But taking that swing out into the golf course where we're required to hit different shots with different clubs almost every swing is completely different. We don't have lines on the floor. We don't have the ability to hit 10, 7 irons in a row. And one of the things that's happened in recent times with the advent of equipment like Flightscope is that we're able to very accurately test a player's individual skill. So, 
FlightScope allows us to build uh, individual tests, so I can test a player on any element of the game, but we can build tests up where we create a virtual target down the range, and you're required to hit a shot or a number of shots to that target, then gives us feedback as to whether you've hit that target or not, showing us a visual representation of the ball flight and whether it's actually hit the target or not. So you're able to test your game. Now, if you don't have access to equipment like FlightScope, what you can do at the range is use your imagination a little bit. Go down to the range, look at targets. Usually there's lots of flags, target boards, yardage boards down there. And rather than spend the entire session just hitting one or two clubs, often driver with a lot of players, but just hitting one or two clubs and building a swing, make sure you devote some time to hitting different shots to different targets. So you take one ball, maybe two balls, but never more than three in a row to the same target with the same club. So we'll walk along, I start out with a, with a mid wedge and maybe I'm gonna hit a shot to a 50 yard target and we'll see how we do with that. And that's not a bad shot, that's come up about five yards short. So I can look at that and say, that was a pretty good wedge shot. What I then might do is change the club. And I'll go here to a six iron. And I'll pick a target out which, which is more appropriate for a six iron yardage. And I'll build my setup, put the ball in position. I'll build my setup, trying to imagine the lines I was using earlier in my session to build the posture. And then we'll hit a shot. And we'll see whether we hit the target or we miss left or right. Hit a six iron. Maybe I go back and hit another wedge shot. This time a different distance. This time we'll maybe go up to about 75 yards. Not bad for distance. Touch left of the target that time, but not bad for distance. And then we'll maybe go right to the other end of the bag. And in this instance, I've got a fairway wood, for me a three wood. And again, and maybe use a couple of marker boards to form a fairway. Build the setup the same way. Pretty happy with that one. And you can see 15, 20 minutes out of maybe an hour's practice session devoted to different clubs. And at the end of a session, I like to see players use a station, take it away then start to work through the bag of clubs. A great practice session for me is where every club that you've brought has been hit in some form. So a couple of different types of practice there to work on this winter. Structured practice, lines down, hitting specific shots with a, with a club, working at swing building. But don't forget to practice different types of shots. Certainly don't neglect your wedges down at the driving range. Don't get suckered into hitting lots of drivers. Build a spread of shots throughout your whole session. You'll be able to take that out into the golf course and become a lot more efficient, a lot more effective at producing your best golf out on the course.